This is Microsoft's Surface Book 2, its performance machine, and boy, is it ever. This is Microsoft's Surface Book 2, its answer to the Surface Book 1, which debuted a couple of years ago. Now, this is supposed to be Microsoft's performance notebook, but it was getting a little bit long in the tooth. It was time for an update, and so Microsoft delivered. So what the surprise was this time around, though, is there's actually two Surface Book 2s. There's this larger 15-inch model and a smaller 13-inch model. Now, this is actually the Surface Book 1, but it's essentially the same thing, so you can get an idea of just how the two compare against one another. What we tested, though, was this model, and that's what we're going to be focusing upon for today. Now, the 15-inch has something really special inside of it, a discrete graphics processor. Now, the original Surface Book did two, but this has performance of about four to five times the original Surface Book. And what makes this especially cool is that this has an NVIDIA, NVIDIA GTX 1060 inside of it. And this thing really screams. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what makes this laptop so special. So first of all, it's not just a laptop, it's a convertible tablet. So you can go ahead and flip it back and forth. You can actually take it out um, using the detach method here. And you can actually put it back like this, if you like. <laughs> or you can flip it upside down. Now, with this, one of the key attributes for this, of course, is the fact that it is a tablet. Um, but that actually is <laughs> where we can sort of start out about one of its uh, pluses and minuses. Now, this is the fact, again, this is a 15-inch tablet. And this display is absolutely enormous. In fact, it is uh, 3240 by 2160. That's a 15-inch tablet. It's got 260 PPI. The problem, though, of course, is that when you're holding it, this is no Amazon Kindle. This is an enormous tablet, and it's sort of just, it's a bit awkward to go ahead and hold in your hand unless you're an NBA player, which I'm obviously not. So usually, I think we're going to be using it in desktop mode. And in fact, that's where it shines. So again, let's talk a little bit about what this has inside of it. So this happens to be the Mondo model, as it were. Uh, it costs $3,299. That's $3,299. That's a ton of money to be paying for a laptop. But again, I think it's worth it. Inside is a Core i7-8650U. That's an 8th gen core processor, the most modern of Intel's processors. And it runs from 1.9 to 4.2 gigahertz. This happens to have 16 gigs of RAM, uh, DDR3 specifically as well as a one terabyte SSD, an NVMe part. So this performance absolutely screams. Now, there's a couple of things that you should know about this as well. Um, the ports on the side are a little bit different from the earlier book model. And the key isn't so much on this side, where it has two USB 3.0 ports. Not 3.1, but 3.0 ports, as well as a, a, a card reader. But on this side. <clears throat> where it has the Surface Connect, which is pretty standard. This is what, it's, this is what the uh, Surface uses for, for power and for I.O. But this, this is a USB-C port. So what you're essentially getting is a USB-A extension, expansion port in a USB-C format. Now, you can actually connect this to an external display, but just one. Um, again, Thunderbolt would allow you to go ahead and use multiple displays. But what I found um, is that really you're sort of limited here um, because, and this is a little bit confusing, so stick with me for a little bit. So USB-C, of course, allows you to connect to an external display, and it should allow you to draw power. It doesn't. Uh, I've tried connecting this to an external battery charger uh, as well as an external charger, and it doesn't actually power the, phone, uh, power the laptop. So you're getting all of your power through the surface connector. That's fine normally. In fact, we have the service connector, these, or the, um, the charger this time around, is actually uh, substantially larger than the older one. Uh, and it actually generates 180 watts of power as opposed to the, the, the older, smaller one. Um, and that's fine for normal use. The problem is if you want to connect it to multiple displays, you have to use the Surface Dock. And the Surface Dock doesn't generate enough power for this under load. So to give you an example, I was trying this last night, playing a few 3D games, and in fact what happened was, even though the connector with the, uh, the laptop was connected to the Surface Dock, is that the power steadily decreased. By the time I was done playing for about an hour, an hour and a half, it was down to 60% charge. So that's a big drawback. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the pluses here. Again, performance. Um, if you're looking to uh, use this for a general purpose productivity device, fine, you're taken care of. If you're looking at this for, uh, to use this as an Adobe 
uh, device for Photoshop, again, perfectly fine. Um, to give you a little bit of an example, um, I've tried uh, Crisis 2, a, um, you know, it's an, older ver it's an older game, but I could run this at uh, 1080p extreme settings. Uh, Watch Dogs 2, I ran on high. Far Cry 3 ran perfectly fine, even on sort of the native settings here too. So again, you're seeing performance here. The other thing that's interesting about the performance though is that this machine is very quiet. Now the Surface Book, and as well as Surface Pro 4 and the Surface Pro, you are always accompanied by a, a fan hiss. There was always a shh as the fan kicked in. There is a fan in this, not in the tablet, but in the base. There's a row of, there's a, grill, there's a small grill right here, and this grill serves as the, the fan port. And with this, there wasn't so much of a hiss as well as, as just a small, a soft fan buzz. So when you're using this, even in a very quiet room, it, there's really hardly any disturbance at all. And I think that really makes that this machine uh, really stand out from the crowd. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that some of these other de devices that we have have large grills on the bottom where if air gets sucked in. This again just has the one fan grill and it really does an interesting, an excellent job in keeping the, the device cool and quiet. Now the other thing I really like about the Surface Book 2 is the batteries. Now there are batteries both in the clipboard, or the tablet portion, as well as the base. And these, just th these things just keep on going. So we test using a video rundown test where we go ahead and loop a 4K video over and over until the battery basically expires. Now normally we've talked about all day battery life in the context of six, eight, maybe 10 hours. This, under our tests, went on for over 13 hours, which is simply amazing. That means you can go ahead and take this to a conference, uh, get up in the morning, start working over breakfast, go through the whole day, and even go into the dinner time and the evening hours as well. And I think really this makes it this, for me, as somebody who goes to a lot of conferences, really makes it stand out um, and really just puts it above the class uh, in terms of everything, in, in terms of its competition as well. Um, now let's talk about a little bit about uh, a couple of other things as well. So we don't have the Microsoft Next Generation mouse to talk about, but we do have a new pen. Now the pen um, is, you know, <clears throat> a pen. <laughs> For me, um, you might not go ahead and get a whole lot of out of this, but it does. It, it is what they call the next generation pen. It has 4,096 levels of pressure, and um, if you, you can. The one thing that we I have always liked about the Surface Books is, of course, you can go ahead um, and draw very nicely on here. Everything comes syncs up very well. You can erase using the uh, the pen as well. Um, and again, I think this is one of the, the uh, certainly one of the things that I like about this, the Surface Book 2. It doesn't come with a pen though, it's a separate, it's, it'll be a separate purchase. Essentially that's it. Um, if you are going to buy this machine, you're going to be paying a lot of money, again about $3,200. It is big and bulky, it does have some weaknesses as far as the ports are concerned, but the performance and the battery life are absolutely terrific. We're still running our final performance tests and we haven't assigned this a star rating as yet, but I can say with confidence that if you buy the Surface Book 2, you're getting a hell of a machine.